Jeepers creepers, where'd you get those peepers? It is midnight. It is midnight here on um, Tuesday. Oh, sorry, Monday night, going into Tuesday. The, well, now, 12.15am on the 27th of September, 2022. Okay. Oh, we've had a, we've had a, a day of it. We, we really had, well, we've had a, an evening, you could say. Uh, a late evening of reactions. Um, we've done a few football videos, we've done a boxing video, and now we're going to get back into football, and we're going to meet, would you believe, the NFL's biggest one-game wonder. Now, this is a, a video um, created by uh, KTO, Calston the Oracle. This video was created five years ago, would you believe, five five years, I've been following the league for four this video was created about a about a year prior to me actually taking a vested interest in the league. But his name's Jerome Harrison. He plays 35 for the Browns, and he's the NFL's biggest one-game wonder. What we will see, only time will tell. I've got absolutely no idea. I don't know who. I don't know what he. I don't know who, who he is. I don't. Well, I know his name, but I don't know what position he plays. I don't, look, a, a one-game wonder. Was he literally a one-game wonder? I mean, you know, of you know, when you think of top 40, when you think of top of the pops um, back in the day, <laughs> you probably have to be at least 30 years old to know what top of the pops was. But when you think of the top 40 as far as music's concerned, you think of one one hit wonders, right? One hit, one one song wonders, one hit wonders. Apparently, the NFL has one game wonders, and today we find out. The NFL's biggest one-game wonder. That's enough from me. Let's get into it. Browns and Chiefs getting together in Kansas City, a battle of uh, two of the worst teams in the NFL. Jason Horowitz, NFL.com's Pat hey, Irwin, glad to be with you on the NFL Preview Show presented by Tyson Anytizers. And if that doesn't get you excited to watch the game, well, I would understand why. Who the fuck is that guy? Yes, two bad teams facing off. How could that be exciting? December 20th, 2009. The Browns versus the Chiefs. Brady Quinn had one heck of a game. 66 passing yards, zero touchdowns, and a whopping two interceptions. <laughs> Yet, the Browns scored 41 points. So, how do they put up these points? Well, Josh... Well, you must have had a fairly decent running game. Cribs was part of it. As one of the few bright spots on the Browns roster, he returned two kickoffs for touchdowns, setting an NFL record along the way for the most kickoff return touchdowns in a season. It was a pretty historic moment, and pretty crazy to think that he returned two in the same game. It was something that had only been done nine other times in the history- Isn't it crazy hearing hearing like one of the worst teams in the league being the Chiefs? I mean, obviously that that's simply not the case these days, but um- Read the NFL. Well, actually, oh, come on, mate. And this performance wasn't even close to the craziest thing that happened that day. Okay, right. The Browns won with two return touchdowns, 66 yards through the year, which is absolutely nothing. No, no receiving touchdowns at all. Two interceptions, and this is the NFL's biggest one-game wonder. Either way, let's continue. Now that Jamal Lewis can no longer play, the Browns don't have many options at running back, so by default, we're getting a good, long look at Jerome Harrison. Meet Jerome Harrison. Not James Harrison, the freak of nature linebacker from Pittsburgh who returned that interception <laughs> in the Super Bowl. No, I'm talking about the 5'9", 205-pound running back. A former fifth-round pick in... 5'9", 205 pounds. Pretty standard. 2006. Fifth-round pick. Jerome Harrison draft. was a backup for most of his tenure in the NFL. He hardly even played in his first three seasons. Let's have a look at this. 33 games played, one game started, and really, yeah, there's there's nothing to sort of write home about there. He didn't even have a touchdown until his third year, and he averaged less than four carries a game, and he never had a thousand-yard season. And now he is finally being handed the reins in week 15 of the 2009 season. And he's about to reach a feat that no Browns player, not even the legendary... J what on earth did he do? What did he do? Did he get 250 yards? Jim Brown had ever done. 
Let me just show you the all-time leaderboard for rushing yards in a game. Look, I see 250, right? Don't tell me he gets 300 yards along the ground. Don't you tell me he gets 300 yards. 250? There goes Bo. Okay. Nobody 221 Bo by Bo Jackson. Down. 228. CJ2K. Which is the greatest pullback ever to play the game. Jimmy's hard to bring down with a wild steer. 243. Two forty-eight. Would you believe Eric Dickerson, the man with the goggles? Two. S honestly, thought it would. I honestly thought this would not go further than two fifty. I, I I've actually never looked specifically at the most rushing yards in a single NFL game, and if he makes three hundred yards in a game after starting one of forty plus games in his first three seasons. 75. Peyton, fifth all time. 286. There he is. That's his name. Jerome Harrison. 2009, third all time. With 286 rushing yards in a single game. Jerome Harrison completely carved the Chiefs all 286 game, rushing yards! How many attempts? Oh, and by the way, his last one came late in the fourth and ended up being the game-winning touchdown. What? The dude was 11 <laughs> yards away What's from he being an all-time single-game rusher in the history of the NFL. And oddly enough, Jamal Lewis, one of the two players ahead of him on this list, was actually on the Browns team. He also set the former record against the Browns when he played for the Ravens. But now, later in his career, he literally was the Browns' starting running back, while Harrison was the backup. Lewis got hurt in Week 12, ultimately giving Harrison the opportunity for this to happen. That's insane. Adrian Peterson's number one. Jamal Lewis is number two, playing for the Browns. He got injured. And lo and behold, Jerome Harrison comes in and basically follows in his footsteps, you could say. And gets the third all-time rushing yards by a running back in a single NFL game. And you know what? Before we continue, we've got to check that. Because this is back in 2017. NFL single game rushing record. It's still 296 yards by uh, Adrian Peterson. November 4th, 2007 against the Chargers. Does Jerome Harrison still hold the number three mark? I wouldn't be surprised, and he does. Adrian Peterson, 296. Jamal Lewis, 295. Jerome Harrison, 286. Corey Dillon, 278. Walter Payton, 275. OJ Simpson, 273. Sean Alexander in seventh place with 266. Jamal Charles in eighth place with 259. And Jonathan Taylor... Equal ninth with DeMarco Murray with 253 rushing yards. Where are we? One game wonder. Before this unbelievable... One game wonder. Right, so he's number three on the list. That That is a record that... Pff, that's that's an incredible record. But what happened after that? Unbelievable performance. In the game before this, Harrison had seven carries for nine yards. To be fair, he did finish the season strong with two more 100-yard games, finishing the year at 862 rushing yards. After the 2009 season, <laughs> he'd only have one more rushing touchdown. What? Only one more rushing touchdown after that season? Look at that! 500 yards in three games! And he couldn't find a, a decent contract? What the fuck? Is it because he played for the Browns or what? ...and one more 100-yard game for the rest of his career. No. This incredible game equated for over 33% of his total yards on the season and 60% of his rushing touchdowns. That 286 yards was 17% of his career rushing yards. What have we here? This is unbelievable. This is the NFL's biggest one-game wonder. To put that into perspective, Emmitt Smith would have to rush for 3,122 yards in a game to achieve 17% of his career total. If Harrison replicated this performance just six times, it would surpass his amount of rushing yards in his career. In a six-year, 62-game career, Simply Jerome Harrison had 1,681 yards.
six year 62 game career and this was in his third year so where did he go after that did he stay at the browns was he still a backup what happened and seven touchdowns which if you look just straight at those numbers you would say that's a pretty solid single season stat line Actually, six of the ten guys on the all-time single-game rushing list had at least a single season with that many yards, and the other ones had a season with at least 1,400. Of the top 50 performances on that list, only three players didn't reach 1,000 yards in a season. Tommy Wilson, a fullback who played in the 50s, Bo Jackson, who played baseball during his career so it limited his games in the NFL, and lastly, Jerome Harrison. Well, Tucker wrote real big. That could be used in reference to the season that you had, especially the last part of it. I mean, well, the last three games, at least. Looking forward, man. I mean, the Cleveland, the fans, they want you to carry that through through this year. Yeah, you know, that's the goal to pick up where I left off. You know, had a good offseason workout, still training down in Florida. And uh, it's going good. I'm probably as strong as I've ever been, best shape I've ever been. Absolutely. Well, strong as you've ever been, best shape you've ever been. What happened? What happened? Harrison would battle injuries and struggle to get on the mm. field for two seasons before ultimately. Well, he went to the Lions, and unfortunately, that doesn't end well for most players. Injuries, injuries. That's the word. That's the key word. physical. Later, to find out that he had a brain tumor, and during surgery to remove what? the tumor, there were further complications no. that temporarily paralyzed Harrison. And to see him like that was just unreal. He was declared a quadriplegic. What? He had paralyzed vocal cords. He was traked and had a feeding tube. After such promise, Jerome Harrison's life had completely flipped upside down. But she didn't say one word. I did. Please tell me he recovered. Die. <laughs> Jerome Harrison has battled back. And he's gained back quite a bit of function that he had lost. Bro, what the fuck, man? This is incre- What? He had a brain tumor. They removed the tumor, but in, in doing so, caused him to become a quadriplegic. What? I could see it in his face, and he was ready to go. He was ready to go. Oh, it was on. It was on. He had just pure determination. He was not going to let this get him down. Oh, nah. You should actually watch the full video on the whole process. It's just overall incredible. Oh, I can only imagine. Inspiring. I can only imagine what, what, what kind of... Jeez, what kind of journey that would have been. Holy as shit. As far as his NFL career, certainly in wasn't six seasons. That. Yeah, maybe he didn't have the most decorated and illustrious career. Not even close. But he did something special that December day. Something that 99% of NFL players will never achieve. Runs left, and he's inside the 40, yes. and 238, so he's passed the great Jim Brown. Single game rushing. How about that? <sighs> Jeez, that's heavy. That's really heavy. That's real heavy. But one thing I do want to know is what was his complete stats from that game? Let's have a look. Well, he ran a 4.47 40 yard dash. He's got a 34 and a half inch vertical jump, 10 foot 4 on the broad jump, and 10, 19 reps on the bench. Played seven seasons in all, 63 games, as we know, 1,681 yards. Um, but his most successful season by far was 2009 with the Cleveland Browns. Played 14 games, only started one, 194 attempts for 862 yards. And longest um, being 71 yards for a touchdown. Seven rushing touchdowns in 63 games. It seems as if he deserved more. Either way, let's get his stats for that exact game. We've got a pro football reference. Jerome Harrison. There he is. 2006 to 2011. Now let's see if we can get an individual game stat line. Game logs, here we go, 2009. Have a look at this. Jeepers creepers. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, 20th of December, 2009. 
against the Kansas City Chiefs. They won 41 points to 34. 34 attempts for 286 rushing yards, 8.41 yards per attempt, three touchdowns, three targets, well, sorry, uh, two receptions for, for 12 yards and averaging six. Um, and he... Yeah, so I don't know. So he didn't he didn't return he didn't he didn't return any kicks that day. In fact, he only returned kicks twice that season. But as far as his performance that day along the ground, 34 attempts for 286 yards at an average of 8.41. And then he comes in the next week against uh, Oakland, 39 attempts for 148 yards at an average of 3.79, one rushing touchdown. And the week after the last game of the season, 33 attempts for 127 yards, an average of 3.85 per attempt. So I'm going to say, in the last three games of the season, he had over 110 rushing attempts for over 500 yards, which is, you know, around about five per attempt. Um, shit, okay. Well, was he a one-game wonder? I don't know. They played Cincinnati in the fourth fourth week of the 2009 season. He had 29 attempts for 121 yards. It's not as if it's not as if he hadn't done it before. But uh, three rushing touchdowns, 286 yards, 34 attempts. I tell you what, if nothing else, I wouldn't have expected his career to end the way it did. All the best to him. I'm not going to look up where he is now. Hopefully, he's happy, healthy, and got his family surrounding him. I mean, that's all I can say. Either way, guys, that was the NFL's biggest one-game wonder, and, well, I'd have to agree. Third all-time in rushing yards in a single game. Not bad at all. Cheers, guys, and, well, I'll see you in the next one. Much love and peace out.